Welcome in to Seahawks Today, powered by Jet Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. So glad to have you with us. On today's show, we have the latest Seattle Seahawks news and rumors, including an injury update on linebacker Daryl Johnson. We'll get to all of that in just one moment. Before we do, though, I want you guys to chime in in the comments section. How long have you been a Seahawks fan? How far back do you go in your fandom of being a Seahawks fan. Look, we have Seahawks fans that are old and young that have been lifelong fans or maybe they're just been fans for a couple of years, whatever it may be. I'm very curious. I want to gauge the fan base and do a little survey here. Let me know in the comment section how long you have been a fan of the Seattle Seahawks. We begin today with Daryl Johnson, the linebacker for Seattle that suffered a foot injury in the win against the Detroit Lions on Sunday. And Johnson is one of the newest members of the Seattle Seahawks. If you recall, he was picked up off waivers before the season began from uh, previously playing with the Buffalo Bills and the Carolina Panthers. And this is what Pete Carroll had to say as far as Johnson's status goes right now. Yeah, he hurt his foot and he has had an injury that is going to take a while. I don't know specifically. I do think it's a stress fracture kind of thing that he's dealing with that's somewhat of a significant injury. Carroll went on to say, Unfortunately, I was really fired up about him in part of our plans. He's big, strong, versatile, active, smart. You know really uh, one of our guys, so I'm really disappointed that he got banged up he was the one guy that really got hurt in this game, referring to Sunday's game against Detroit. We know that DK Metcalf, just because he got carted off for having to use the bathroom, he was okay. So with Daryl Johnson, the, you may be wondering what's his track record and everything. Uh, we mentioned that he was claimed off waivers last month, and he started, got his first start as a Seahawk this past weekend in place of Shelby Harris, who was out on Sunday. Now, Pete Carroll did add that he's hopeful that Johnson will return this season. Now, what does this injury mean as far as where the Seahawks turn to next? We'll dive into that in just one second, though. But let's show some love for Daryl Johnson. Twelves, I know that you guys are the best fan base in the National Football League, and so we want to send some warm wishes and do our part uh, for Daryl Johnson. So I encourage you to type 40 in the comments section to show some love for Daryl and uh, hopefully we see him back on the football field here pretty quickly. I'll say this much as far as this situation goes. Well, I feel bad for Daryl Johnson and hope that he's okay. I wouldn't be saying the same message that Pete Carroll is saying right now. Quite frankly, this isn't the end of the world being without Daryl Johnson. The Seahawks have much bigger issues to deal with, quite frankly. Look, Johnson's numbers this year were not anything that jumped off the page. Four tackles, one tackle for loss in these first four games of the season. With Johnson out, Daryl Taylor continuing to be a non-producer, the next thing the Seahawks will need is Boye Mafe to get more snaps. Mafe played around 30 snaps in week four against the Detroit Lions, and for me, that's what I'm looking for. When you're trying to find other options, when you're trying to rotate more guys in, for me, I look at this as an opportunity for Boye Mafe to step up and get more playing time. And look, a second-round rookie out of Minnesota, the sky's the limit for this guy. He was terrific in training camp and in the preseason, and he's already looked very good to this point in time with 13 tackles, a sack, a tackle for loss. The ESPN projections right now for Boye Mafe are showing him on pace for about a 55 tackle 4.3 sack season I think those numbers can take a big jump up if Boye Mafe can get more playing time and play to his potential from what he's already shown what we've seen from him in just his short time in Seattle watch out to me this is the guy right here I'm excited about what he brings to the table and could be a big impact player if he gets that playing time. So me, that's what I look at throughout all this. When you're trying to find other pieces, when you're trying to you know, put some Band-Aids on situations here, for me, I look at this as an opportunity for Boye Mafe 
to get more playing time with this Seattle Seahawks defense. Should he get more playing time? I think so. If you agree with me, type Y for yes. If you disagree with me, type in for no. Let me know if you'd like to see more of Boye Mafe with the Seattle Seahawks right now. If so, why for yes, in for no, let me know. Got a great deal that we're offering Seahawks fans here on Seahawks today. It is a shirt combination. Whether you're looking for the short sleeves or the long sleeves, you can be rocking with your Hawk out in any Seahawks gear that we offer, especially the throwback stuff, as you can see, from the old AFC days, and they're on sale now, uh, 25% off to be exact. Wall supplies last, and the only place that you can get this combo is at chatsports.com slash Seahawks combo. Get yours now, 25% off, chatsports.com slash Seahawks combo for more there. Also on Seahawks today, we have an update in regards to the organization in news that I was not expecting to deliver today, but nonetheless, getting involved in the political campaign cycle, the midterms coming up, and I'm no expert on politics in the state of Washington. I'll make that clear uh, from the jump here, but want to tell you about this situation going on between the Seahawks campaign and Tiffany Smiley's Senate campaign. Smiley is a Republican candidate in the state of Washington who right now is uh, looking to challenge for that seat against Patty Murray, who is the incumbent Democrat senator from that state. And her husband is a former Army veteran who ended up several years ago actually at a Seahawks game raising the 12th man flag and was given a Seahawks jersey. That was back in 2014. He was the Army's first blind active duty officer to raise the 12th man flag eight years ago. So a really cool moment there. Well, now to set that scene up for you, the Seahawks have threatened Smiley's campaign over an ad that was released that showed Smiley's husband, Scott, who we just mentioned there, in a Seahawks jersey. And they're claiming that this is a you know commercial use copyright violation. Here's the photo that we're talking about here that was in this ad. It was a very quick ad, and they have sent a cease and desist letter based on this image uh, there in, uh, in the ad that was played. Now, some more context for this situation that I want to bring you here. Let's go back over some more of these details. The Seahawks demanded that the Smiley campaign immediately cease due to its unauthorized commercial use of copyright material. In this case, the copyright material was Smiley's jersey. Now, this is just one of a couple of things that have come up with Smiley's campaign in regards to uh, you know, unauthorized use of sorts. The uh, Seattle Times has also issued a cease and desist to the Smiley campaign. The uh, Starbucks has also issued a cease and desist as well to this campaign. But the hypocrisy is one thing that is getting the big attention in all this is because the incumbent candidate that is running for that seat, Patty Murray, uh, was allowed to use the Seattle Times in 2016, use their logos and images, and it wasn't a big deal. And then the hypocrisy of the Seahawks, you point to a situation just within the last couple of days where Democratic State Representative Tara Simmons was seen on social media wearing Seahawks gear and posing with players, and the Seahawks had nothing to say about that. They made no statement, no bones whatsoever about a Democratic candidate doing this, but then when it was a Republican in the case of the Smiley campaign, then they issued a statement and issued this cease and desist letter. Here is what the Smiley campaign responded with in their statement that came out uh, this week to the media about how they've been treated by the Seahawks and other corporations. Woke corporations thought they could help Patty Murray by bullying Tiffany with senseless legal threats. Their efforts have both failed and backfired. This campaign will continue to hold accountable the failures 
of a three-decade incumbent and offer Washingtonians a path from crisis to hope, just as Tiffany did for Scotty and countless other injured veterans. That is from the Smiley campaign. So, with that, uh, not very kind, I would say, for someone they honored just a few years ago. But that's what's going on here. I don't make the call here. What say you? You tell me in the comment section. Are the Seahawks treating Scott Smiley fair? Let's play fair or foul on this. If you think that if this is a fair move, that they have the right to do this, that they're working in their best interest, then type FA for fair. If you think this is a foul move, the way that they've treated Scott Smiley, let me know in the comments section, type FO for foul. Let me know, FA for fair or FO for foul. We're covering this team each and every day on the channel, whether it's news like that that I wasn't expecting to talk about, or it's the latest news, rumors, when we do watch parties, live shows every week. We are all over it here on Seahawks Today. It's all in one place right here on the channel. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment as well. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV here. Thanks for joining us.